Today, I'd like to take a look at some of the major components and the sequence of operation of a hydronic heating system that is handling a 300 unit, 15 story, multifamily residential building. Although all buildings differ, the hydronic heating components will be the same in any building. I'd like to break it down and take a look at the combustion process first, followed up by the hydronic heating loop. Let's take a look. The process of safe and efficient combustion always begins with the introduction of fresh air into the mechanical room. On a call for the boiler to fire, outside air dampers with modulating motors are open and whisker proving switches prove to the boiler that fresh air is being introduced and it is safe to begin the combustion process. Now that the proving switches have proved that fresh air is being introduced into the boiler room, any one of these four hydronic heating boilers behind me can be fired to maintain the heating load. Each boiler has four stages, further improving its flexibility to match the load of the building and increasing the efficiency. On a call for heating, a small combustion fan on the inside of the boiler draws air in through the combustion opening and through the filters. That air or oxygen in that air is being used for the process of combustion and being exhausted out of the chimney. Our chimney has a barometric damper which is maintaining the proper draft or negative pressure in the chimney and is accompanied by a spill switch which is an important safety for our combustion process. If gases of combustion begin to spill, that spill switch will sense that rise in heat and shut down the boiler, preventing the spill of carbon monoxide into the boiler room. Let's take a look at some of the internal components of the boiler. Above my head, you can see the natural gas line that's gonna provide the fuel for our combustion in our hydronic heating boiler. That natural gas gets piped into our boiler and feeds the individual gas valves that are associated with the stages in our boiler. Here, our boiler has four stages, two gas valves here and two under the next section. Upon a call for heat, our combustion fan comes on and draws air in through the filters that we saw previously. Using the oxygen contained in that air to mix with our fuel and spark ignition to light it, the combustion process can now take place. Let's take a look at how the water absorbs the heat from those products of combustion. While the process of combustion is taking place, a small pump mounted on the side of the boiler is used to drag water out of the main hydronic heating loop that pump draws that water in through the boiler so it can absorb the heat from the gases of combustion. Then it discharges that water back through the boiler, still absorbing heat, and deposits that heated water back into my main hydronic loop. This hydronic loop is going to be used to send that heated water throughout the building to any area that requires the heating. The main hydronic heating loop consists of return water returning from the building plus the heated water that just came out of our hydronic boiler. The combination of the two provides the appropriate heating water temperature to send throughout the building. That water passes through an air separator. Because our hydronic heating system is a closed loop system, we must have a component that will allow for the removal of entrapped air. And that is what the air separator will do for us. The water continues to get drawn in through a pump strainer into our centrifugal hot water pump. This main hot water pump is the pump that will send this hot water throughout the entire building to be used by the spaces requiring the heating. Control of these pumps is accomplished by the use of variable frequency drives. 
as motorized valves on individual heating units begin to close and there is a rise in hot water pressure, the drives will respond by slowing down the pumps. This provides tremendous efficiency for our hot water pumps and also adds efficiency to our hydronic heating system as a whole. Another required component in our hydronic heating system is the expansion tank. Because our hydronic system is a closed loop system and completely full, and when we heat water it will expand, the expansion tank allows a place for that water to expand without raising the system pressure. Coordinating the operation of these four boilers is this boiler controller. It contains an outside air sensor which looks at the outside air temperature and resets the boiler water temperature according to the load that the building is under. As the outside air temperature begins to rise, the boiler controller will reset the boiler water temperature down as to not overheat the building and also to add efficiency to the system. As the outside air temperature drops, the boiler controller will call on more stages of heat and increase the hot water temperature in order to satisfy the increased heating load. Now that we've discussed the major components and the sequence of operation of our hydronic heating system, let's end on some basic maintenance practices that should be followed in order to keep your boiler running safe and efficiently. Ensure that all outside air dampers and louvers are free of debris and clear to allow outside air in. Good pump maintenance on the boiler pump and the main hydronic pump, including strainer cleanings and greasings, are extremely important to the maintenance and sustainability of the pumps. Variable frequency drives should be shut down and blown out with a dry compressed gas at least once a year to clean heat sinks and debris off of the circuit boards. In closing, doing these maintenance practices will ensure that your boiler will run safely and efficiently for many years to come.